Is Christmas celebration right or wrong? Christmas is celebrated on December 25th and is both a sacred religious holiday and a worldwide cultural and commercial phenomenon. Christmas is an annual festival commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ, a celebration among billions of people around the world. For two millennia, people around the world have been observing it with traditions and practices that are both religious and secular in nature. Christians celebrate Christmas Day as the anniversary of the birth of Jesus Christ. Popular customs include exchanging gifts, decorating Christmas trees, attending church, sharing meals with family and friends and, of course, waiting for Santa Claus to arrive. Most Christian churches celebrate Christmas. We decorate, we sing songs, and we have special services. We gather in our homes with our loved ones to feast and to give gifts. And we walk around wishing one another a Merry Christmas. But are we right to do all this? Is it healthy for us, as disciples of Jesus, to give this holiday such an important place on our calendars, and to observe it in the ways we do? Or, perhaps, have we uncritically accepted rites, practices, and symbols that are irredeemably pagan and opposed to the worship of the one true God into our lives and churches? Hello friends I am Habron Peters, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Christian Chronicler. I create informative videos related to Christianity. If you are new to this channel, do bless me by clicking like and subscribe button. Also don't forget to share and comment. It boots up my moral to create such videos for you. Let's start, our informative video on. Is celebrating Christmas, right, or wrong? First of all let's try to know that, how did Christmas start? The middle of winter has long been a time of celebration around the world. Centuries before the arrival of Jesus, early Europeans celebrated light and birth in the darkest days of winter. Many peoples rejoiced during the winter solstice, when the worst of the winter was behind them and they could look forward to longer days and extended hours of sunlight. In Scandinavia, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, and the Norse are people from North Germany, celebrated Yule from December 21st, the winter solstice, through January, in recognition of the return of the sun. The last day of winter in the Northern Hemisphere was celebrated as the night that the Great Mother Goddess gives birth to the baby sun god. Fathers and sons would bring home large logs, a huge log is added to a bonfire, around which everyone would dance and sing to awaken the sun from its long winter sleep. The people would feast until the log burned out, which could take as many as 12 days. The Norse believed that each spark from the fire represented a new pig or calf that would be born during the coming year. The end of December was a perfect time for celebration in most areas of Europe. At that time of year, most cattle were slaughtered so they would not have to be fed during the winter. For many, it was the only time of year when they had a supply of fresh meat. In addition, most wine and beer made during the year was finally fermented and ready for drinking. In Germany, people honored the pagan god Odin during the midwinter holiday. Germans were terrified of Odin, as they believed he made nocturnal flights through the sky to observe his people, and then decide who would prosper or perish. Because of his presence, many people chose to stay inside. In Rome, where winters were not as harsh as those in the far north, Saturnalia, a holiday in honor of Saturn, the god of agriculture, was celebrated. Beginning in the week leading up to the winter solstice and continuing for a full month, Saturnalia was a hedonistic time, when food and drink were plentiful and the normal Roman social order was turned upside down. For a month, enslaved people were given temporary freedom and treated as equals. Business and schools were closed so that everyone could participate in the holiday's festivities. Also around the time of the winter solstice, Romans observed Juvenilia, a feast honoring the children of Rome. In addition, members of the upper classes often celebrated the birthday of Mithra, the god of the unconquerable sun, on December 25. It was believed that Mithra, an infant god, was born of a rock. For some Romans, Mithra's birthday was the most sacred day of the year. Is Christmas really the day Jesus was born? In the early years of Christianity, Easter was the main holiday, the birth of Jesus was not celebrated. To avoid persecution during the Roman pagan festival, early Christians decked their homes with Saturnalia holly. As Christian numbers increased and their customs prevailed, the celebrations took on a Christian observance. But the early church actually did not celebrate the birth of Christ in December until Telesphorus, who was the second bishop of Rome from 125 to 136 AD, 
declared that church services should be held during this time to celebrate the Nativity of Our Lord and Savior. However, since no one was quite sure in which month Christ was born, Nativity was often held in September, which was during the Jewish Feast of Trumpets modern-day Rosh Hashanah. In fact, for more than 300 years, people observed the birth of Jesus on various dates. In the year 274 AD, solstice fell on the 25th of December. Roman Emperor Aurelian proclaimed the date as, Natalis Solis Invicti, the festival of the birth of the Invincible Son. In 320 AD, Pope Julius I specified the 25th of December as the official date of the birth of Jesus Christ. In the 4th century, church officials decided to institute the birth of Jesus as a holiday. Unfortunately, the Bible does not mention date for his birth. Although some evidence suggests that his birth may have occurred in the spring reason why would shepherds be herding in the middle of winter. Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. It is commonly believed that the church chose this date in an effort to adopt and absorb the traditions of the pagan Saturnalia festival. In 325 AD, Constantine the Great, the first Christian Roman emperor, introduced Christmas as an immovable feast on the 25th of December. He also introduced Sunday as a holy day in a new seven-day week, and introduced movable feasts, Easter. In 354 AD, Bishop Liberius of Rome officially ordered his members to celebrate the birth of Jesus on the 25th of December. However, even though Constantine officiated the 25th of December as the birthday of Christ, Christians, recognizing the date as a pagan festival, did not share in the emperor's good intentions. It was first called the Feast of the Nativity, the custom spread to Egypt by 432 and to England by the end of the 6th century. In the 10th century, Haakon I of Norway took steps to merge the pagan festival Yule with Christmas. It has been suggested that much of the Santa Claus imagery derived from Yuletide depictions of the Norse god Odin who had a white beard and flew through the sky on an eight-legged horse to deliver gifts. By holding Christmas at the same time as traditional winter solstice festivals, church leaders increased the chances that Christmas would be popularly embraced, but gave up the ability to dictate how it was celebrated. By the Middle Ages, Christianity had, for the most part, replaced pagan religion. On Christmas, believers attended church, then celebrated raucously in a drunken, carnival-like atmosphere. Each year, a beggar or student would be crowned the Lord of Misrule, and eager celebrants played the part of his subjects. The poor would go to the houses of the rich and demand their best food and drink. If owners failed to comply, their visitors would most likely terrorize them with mischief. Christmas became the time of year when the upper classes could repay their real or imagined debt to society by entertaining less fortunate citizens. Prior to the Victorian era, Christmas was primarily a religious holiday observed by Christians of the Roman Catholic, Anglican, and Lutheran denominations. Its importance was often considered secondary to that of Epiphany and Easter. The Puritans, on the other hand, objected to the Christian feast of Christmas, during the English Interregnum, when England was ruled by a Puritan parliament. Puritans sought to remove elements they viewed as unbiblical, from their practice of Christianity, including those feasts established by the Anglican Church. In 1647, the Puritan-led English Parliament banned the celebration of Christmas, replacing it with a day of fasting and considering it, a popish festival with no biblical justification, and a time of wasteful and immoral behavior. After restoration of Prince Charles II, he restored the favorite festival Christmas once again. The idea of, Feast Day of Christ, or Christmas was originated in Germany, but Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, who later spread it to the rest of the world and their colonies. This event was intended to make the whole family enjoy a day before December 25th on Christmas Eve. Christmas failed to gain universal recognition among Christians until quite recently. Christmas as we know it became widely popular only in the 19th century when the trading companies started making Christmas-related products such as greeting cards, decorations, Christmas tree etc. and advertising their products. So what do we do? Should we celebrate Christmas? How do we evaluate two very different positions on this? One that sees Christmas as one of the most wonderful time of the year, and another that sees it as rank idolatry. Whether we agree or disagree. Before challenging one another on morally biblical grounds, we should meditate on Paul's advice in Romans 14, 
where he instructs believers who disagree on potentially divisive issues to learn to live graciously with one another. According to Romans 14, 5 to 6 one person considers one day more sacred than another, another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He also says in Ephesians 4, 3, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The church should be a place where people who have strong convictions on controversial topics should be able to fellowship alongside those who do not, or even those who are convinced otherwise. This means being slow to pass judgment on one another and being sensitive to those who are weak of conscience. Our hope is the same as Paul's which we find in Romans 15, 5-6. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christians around the world are very diverse in culture, as there are no traditions mentioned in the Bible, Christians adopted ancient tradition of their locality or country. If the area was once colony of Europe, then the Christmas traditions is the blend of both local and western. According to me, there is no harm in celebrating Christmas, Christmas itself means gathering in Christ. We all know that Jesus was not born on the 25th of December and it is not our concern how Christmas came into existence but through Christmas, at least, we can remember Christ's birth and can give him thanks and praise for giving us beautiful gift of salvation. That's all my friends. Do bless me by clicking like and subscribe button. Also don't forget to share and comment. Meet you in the next video meaning of symbols used in Christmas. Goodbye for now. God bless you.